Hi traders, second one minute candle here in HPQ. The stock is down more than 8%. You expect a stock that is gapping down 8% to gap and go, meaning it's gapping down and you expect it to continue down, not, in the, not to move in the direction of closing the gap, but to move in the direction of the gap. I'm about to short, shorting now. So I've shorted it at 1557. As you can see here, my stop loss is just 13 cents or so, just over the highs and it's moving down. So I'm trying to get 15, 20 cents. I've got 10 now, just spiked down nicely. I've got a bit more, took my partial. <laughs> that was very quick in and out my first trade. Not a huge winner. I mean, I've just got like uh, 600, maybe $700. But that was a nice, nice initial move and a gap, a gap, again, a gap can go. So what about Boeing here, BA? Well, technically, it looks like it should go higher. I do not like to go long Boeing. I would rather go short. The reason for that is it's Boeing. I mean, they don't sell anything right now. And the fact that Boeing started up by 3%, is not something that I would trust. So that's partly fundamental here, but also I'm watching the S&P right now and the S&P is coming down. And the S&P started with the gap up too, which can explain why Boeing is starting with the gap up. So I'm watching the way it failed to move here. You see once, then twice. Now it's coming down. If it's going to come down under 154.80 or so, 153.80, I'm going to short it. I'm watching it as it comes down under now, it's getting there. Here comes the 80, now moved under and I short. So I'm short 4,000 shares in Boeing, expecting it to come under the lows and it's touching and it just did. It just did come down under the lows. You expect a lot of volume to come in now. You expect it to accelerate because a lot of people would like to short it once it comes down under the lows, although it's not doing that. I don't like this pullback here. Okay, I guess I'll have to go through this. But again, I'm watching the market, the S&P 500 now, and it is coming down. So Boeing should follow and it does. Good, good, good. Here comes a new low and we're going and we're going. I'm getting ready for my partial. It's overextended now. First sign of a pullback. I'm up $4,000 now, a bit more. Now, I thought it was about to pull back a bit up and took my partial. And again, you know, it's, this trade is based mainly on market direction. Watch the S&P here. We started with a gap up and as you can see, we initially came down. The point where we close the gap, which is right now, that could be the point of reversal. Usually when the market starts with a gap up like 0.3% as it started today, you would expect it to come down, close the gap. Now the stock did follow the market as it should. So I thought Boeing is failing to move higher. The market came, came down. That was a perfect trade. I'm watching DLTR. The first thing you should know is that uh, it has a very nice technical formation here. Watch uh, this very nice resistance point here. But you also need to take a look at the market. I just mentioned a few seconds ago when I watched the market closing the gap, I expected it to bounce. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a small bounce or this would be the low of the day. But when the market is closing the gap, that's the only thing it wants to do. Come down, close the gap, and then possibly change direction. So it's very, very realistic now that the S&P will stop coming down here and will move higher. Therefore, DLTR should move higher too. Now, take a look. It's coming there. And I'm going to go long over 96.80. And it's right now. I'm long. I'm long DLTR. I mean, the stock is up 10%. Everybody's watching it. Everybody's watching it. It should continue moving higher now. And it does so far. Now, here's DLTR. It made the move I was expecting it to make, not without some small pullbacks. About to take my partial here, selling 3,600 shares sold now. Took my partial in DLTR. That worked out fine. You see, it came very close to the highs now. You would expect to have some kind of resistance. I don't expect it to continue higher from here. That's why I took my partial right here. Maybe it's going to bounce. Maybe it's going to continue later. And here's my results. Just 20 minutes into the trading session and I'm still holding uh, 400 shares of HPQ and DLTR, another 400 shares. And uh, done with three trades, all green, HPQ, DLTR and Boeing. So all is well today. Three out of three green trades. 
up $5,700, a few hundred dollars more open. So just over $6,000. All of my trades were called live in our live trading room, which you can join by clicking here for a free 14-day trial. We all trade together, share the same picks, and I'm really looking forward to trading with you. And I do want to, dis to discuss a little bit more in details what happened to DLTR later. Beautiful breakout formation in DLTR just moved to a new high. Let's discuss this a bit. Look at the spike when it moved to a new high and look at the volume. I mean, so technical. Moved to a new high, spiked up over the highs. Now, you know, the thing is, when you have a stock that is up 12%, it, it did not start 12%, maybe 9% or so. But you need to think about it uh, in the following manner. When you have a stock that everybody is watching, the moment it's going to move over the high, it's going to be a spike up. Why? Because everybody is watching. You see, when, when a stock is up 9%, 12% right now, it comes up on every screen. Now. So everybody who's watching something is going to see DLTR today, is going to follow DLTR today, is going to buy it when it has a nice technical formation. Because what really is technical analysis? It's more like a self-fulfilling prophecy, really. And then it moves over the highs, it's spiking. And then once it spikes over the highs, the volume comes in, more people are following, more people are buying, which is, of course, a foolish mistake. You don't do that. The question is, how do you define a successful breakout? What is a successful breakout? Is DLTR a successful breakout? In the case of uh, DLTR, the answer is yes, it is. Because it never looked, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's a question of definition. Uh, it never looked back beyond its uh, breakout point. So if you look at the breakout point, that would be the high candle here, um, which is uh, 97.90. So once it moved after, uh, over 97.90, it spiked a bit, it came but it did not come down under the entry point. There's a lot of definitions to what is a failure, a breaking, uh, a breakout failure. So some would say if it would spike up, doesn't matter how much, and then comes down under your entry point, that would be regarded as a failing breakout. Uh, some other would say if it spiked up to my target and I've got my partial and then it matters how do you define your partial point, what is your risk reward, and so on, then they would call it a failure. Like if it spikes up, you take your partial, why would you call it a failure, right? I think in my opinion, if we need to define what happened to DLTR, so let's assume 9790 was the entry point, okay, which I believe it was, and then you look for the next support the next support comes down 80 cents lower. So in my definition, it would be you got to have at least one to one risk reward. So if it did not make it 80 cents higher, then before coming to your stop loss point, which is 80 cents lower, then that would be a failure. But again, there's a lot of ways to define what is a failure? What is a breakout failure? It's a very clear breakout here. It came out with a very nice technical formation, nice cup and handle. Once it moved over the highs, you can see the extended volume bar, which is right below. And uh, now it's moving higher. So it did not move under your entry point or to your stop loss. And right now it's up almost one and a half point. So that was um, definitely a successful breakout. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Tradenet's free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no risk, no cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.